Hello, this is Patrick with New Jersey's Outdoor Adventures YouTube channel. I'm here in Alair State Park, and today we're going to get a walkthrough of a truck camper. And if uh, some of the viewers are not familiar with truck campers, uh, you pick a pickup truck like this F-350 here, the truck backs in underneath the truck camper, and you attach it to the vehicle and you could drive away. And the advantage is you could get a four wheel drive pickup truck and take these on the beach, take them out in the woods. And Chris today is going to give us a tour. Hello, Chris, and welcome to New Jersey Outdoor Adventures. Welcome, Patrick. Thank you for, uh, for stopping by. Um, I'd like to uh, show you a little bit of my uh, 2021 Northern Light uh, 811 EX SE um, truck camper. Okay, uh, the 811 will fit on a six and a half foot bed, and they also have a 9.6 and a 10.2, and those are four eight foot beds. So this is the smallest truck camper that Northern Light makes. Uh, come on in, let's take a look. As you walk in the door and you go all the way to the nose of the, the cab is our bed area. Okay, it is a full 60 by 80 queen size bed. Uh, and it has what they call a, um, a little uh, a, a mat underneath there. And I forget what it's called. But uh, it keeps the uh, mattress up off the uh, bottom plywood and uh, prevents uh, sweating okay and condensation as we all know condensation is the uh, biggest enemy of any kind of a camper uh, it'll rot wood out in a heartbeat and you won't even know about it um, up on the top there's two compartments on either side and that's where we store our clothing okay then there are there's a wardrobe on this side okay uh, right now, all I have in there right now is a pillow, okay? And then on the other side is our electrical and uh, stereo connections. I know some people would say, uh, you're camping, what do you need a TV for? But there are some times when uh, you just want to relax, watch a movie, play a video game, or whatever. And that TV swivels all around. You can see it here at the dinette. You can swivel it around. You can watch it in the bed. Uh, my wife and I enjoy it a, a lot. Uh, it's definitely uh, nice. Uh, up in the back, we have uh, a couple of uh, map lights. Let's go this way. Yeah. Okay. Little reading lights give off a nice uh, little uh, little hue to it nice so you don't have to use the big lights to uh, to read at night if your partner wants to uh, read the uh, the windows are a thermal pane uh, dual paned thermal insulated acrylic so you have a screen that comes down and a shade that comes up. Really nice, really handy. And you notice that the windows are awning style. So if it's raining outside, you can have the windows open. You get a nice, real good, nice cross breeze through here. And we also have a skylight. This is one of my favorite features. Um, you lay here, look at the stars at night. Okay, this will open all the way up. And it even give you some access to the roof. Speaking of the roof, on top of the roof, there are two 100 watt solar panels. So on a nice day like today, we're getting plenty of sunlight and uh, it's keeping our batteries charged. And it's a cool day out, so I don't need to run the air conditioner or anything like that. So really, I, I can have as much peace and quiet in here as I'd like. All the appliances run off of 12 volts. Okay, and I have a small inverter charger if I have a laptop that I want to charge up. 
Okay, and you also have a shade screen up in the skylight as well. So if you want to sleep in a little late, you put that across and it makes this whole place pitch black. Now I also have a 9500 BTU air conditioner. 9500 BTUs. It's a, a Coleman Mach series and a simple 2000 watt Honda generator will run that and it'll run it all day long. Uh, if I'm running it all day long I'll probably go through a full tank of gas. Uh, if I run it intermittently then I you know I could stretch it out as long as I need to. We have our uh, center galley. Okay it is a huge deep sink. Okay I can't, I can't believe, you can just about empty out a water tank in that thing if you wanted to. It is huge, nice and deep, fits nice, nice amounts of pans, uh, dishes, things like that. Uh, and over the top is uh, our food storage. Now we elected not to have a microwave, so this just made, this is where the microwave would go. And the microwave was actually would actually be hidden by this door, and then you'd only have this, and then this small for uh, storage. So this really opens things up, up a lot. Um, Jensen AM/FM CD radio uh, and DVD player. So you know, if you uh, just want to watch a little movie or something like that, you know, you have your choice. Uh, it's a, a Furion uh, vent hood, uh, and I tell you what, the, the, the Furion is really nice. It, it, you can feel the air move, okay, when you turn that on. So, but uh, it's also uh, mated with a three burner suburban stove. Okay, and it is in the uh, Elite Series, so it's got, uh, you know, little uh, backlit LEDs. And then it's got a small oven. And then this is our underdraw storage for pots, pans, utensils, things like that. Underneath the sink, we have a little garbage pail, you know, some, uh, uh, you know, saran wrap, aluminum foil, and things like that. This has uh, turned out to be our remote storage. Okay, and then it's got a little fold-out uh, for sponges and things like that. Hot water heater. It's got electric and gas. Uh, when we first got it. Uh, I, I thought the light was supposed to come on. That's actually just a trouble light. So if there's something that's actually wrong, that's when the light will come on. Now, you may ask that, uh, you know, I, I, I've seen some utensils and things like that, but no silverware or anything like that. Well, underneath the front step is our silverware drawer. Now inside here was a molded tray, and uh, we thought that just took up too much room. Okay, and we didn't want to, we, we wanted to get more stuff in there. So basically we took that tray out, we put these little holders in, and it's been working great for us. Okay, underneath here we have a pass-through window, uh, which actually isn't a pass-through. Okay, you can't really uh, put anything through, but it is great for backing the truck up and helping to uh, guide to load the truck onto, uh, the camper onto the back of the truck. Um, these curtains uh, do close, so if you wanted to uh, close them up and uh, you know, for a little bit of privacy, you can do so. Have your uh, six cubic foot refrigerator and freezer. One of the things about the tr uh, truck camper, uh, when I first started doing some research that I didn't like was the size of the refrigerator and the freezer. It was either too small. Uh, there was no freezer or anything like that, so, but this is really nice. Six and a half cubic feet, 
you have your refrigerated section and you have your freezer section. As ice comes out. <laughs> okay, and then moving one more back, you have another closed closet. Okay, uh, again, we haven't really put much of anything in here. Uh, I have some work supplies, uh, computers, laptops, things like that. So, one of the things that I really like about Northern Light is they really, they weigh their campus as they leave the factory as built. Okay, and they post that very plainly in every single camper. It really says it gives you, it gives you the wet weight and the dry weight. So that's really nice. You don't have to guess. Okay, up above, we have a fantastic fan. Uh, it's just a plain Jane fantastic fan. Manual turn on. It does have a thermostat. So if you want, you know, you set it to a, a temperature where you're comfortable at and it'll keep and maintain that temperature. Okay, so down below here, okay, you have our, this is our battery monitor. Okay, it maintains, uh, it gives us an at-a-glance look at the condition of our batteries. So if I was to push the percentage, it tells me my batteries are at 100%. Okay, if I hit the voltage, it tells me what the battery is charged up to. And your amps is my charge rate, whether it's charging or discharging. Okay. Um, we have two lithium ion batteries in there. They're both 100 amp hours a piece. Uh, and I haven't run the batteries any lower than maybe 70%. Okay, and, and I'm not stingy about using power. I'll, I'll, I'll use power all day long. Um, heating system. Okay, so you have your main duct here. And then as we move around, I'll show you the other ducts that are that are underneath. This here is uh, the LED light lights for the awning outside. Okay, and this is the switch to bring the uh, awning in or out. Okay, so uh, of course you have a battery disconnect. Uh, if uh, there should be some kind of issue with the batteries or anything like that, you just Turn the key and it'll pop right out. Now this rug, my wife really likes this because you know if you want to get do some camping in the winter, okay, you got a nice little rug, okay. Um, if uh, you're bringing sand in and out, you can roll this rug right up, take it outside, shake it out, put it back down and save the laminate. So, moving on in. This is our bathroom. It is a full wet bath. And you notice inside there that shower curtain. What we do is we take the shower curtain, we run it on behind the toilet and then around. And there's a track up on the top over here. And it keeps everything, it's there mostly for the, the wood on the door. Uh, everything else is all made of uh, a fiberglass and really it can get wet, no issues, no worries. Uh, back in here, behind the mirror, the medicine cabinet. Now, this is not the original shower head. Uh, the first thing that we did was we uh, took the Oxygenix shower head out of our fifth wheel camper and uh, we installed it here. The water pressure, the air that it injects, it just gives you a much, much better shower. Okay, uh, this is a side flush toilet. You uh, push the, uh, slide the button. Just like the toilet at home. Uh, sink, and this is your toilet, this is the toilet paper dispenser. Okay, uh, the toilet paper hides up underneath there. Uh, this way it doesn't get wet when you're taking a shower. Okay. 
coming on back over in. We have a Dream Dinette. Now this is a forward um, face to face dinette. They do have one that's a U shape. Uh, we didn't really like it. We felt that it was a, a lot more cramped than it could should be, uh, and it doesn't really give you any extra space. This I could fit uh, four people in here, uh, pretty comfortable. Okay, not that it's a big uh, camper anyway. To operate it, I'll just move the cushions out of the way. Push it straight down. I like to call this lounge mode. What I'll often find myself doing is putting it down and just sitting here like it was a couch. You know, my wife and I would sit here, you know, we could watch a movie, we could kind of snuggle next to each other, lay down a little bit. Makes it really, really nice. Now, you have venting ducts here, 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 okay, and then the main furnace duct is over here, and then there's speakers located all around as well. So there's actually, uh, the radio is set up for three zones, but there's actually two zones. There's two speakers in the uh, sleeping area, and there's two speakers over here. So up underneath the dinette, okay, you notice it's raised a little bit. We found that it was a ni nice spot to put uh, shoes, uh, sandals, things like that, uh, just to get them up and out of the way. You have a couple of more drawers. On the control panels here, this is strictly for the, uh, the heater, okay, the furnace, okay. And you also have the same reading lights here. What I did forget to mention uh, up in the bedroom area is that all of these lights have USB plugs. Okay, so you can plug any USB device into it to charge or anything like that. This is our controller. You can have at a glance of what your tanks are like. This does have a black tank and it does have a gray tank as well as a fresh water tank. Um, the capacities on the uh, tanks, I believe the Fresh water is 30 gallons, uh, 22 in gray, and 11 in black. Okay, and of course, Northern Light provides a little clock too. So they have a little clock with that. Let's take a look outside and uh, take a walk around the outside of the camper. Let's, uh, let's go on the business end first. Inside here, uh, we have uh, all of our uh, sewage facilities. Okay, this is lit inside as well. Okay, I have a couple of screwdrivers in there, but primarily it's your gray tank full handle and your black tank full handle. Okay, and those are located underneath here. That's the outlet for it. Okay, and then uh, what you would get is, uh, if you pull this, water would come rushing out. Pull the other one, some other stuff would come running out. I, uh, I always use a clear elbow because uh, this way when you're Getting rid of the waste, you can kind of tell uh, when your tanks are clean. Okay, so that, that clear elbow is wonderful for that. Have an outdoor shower. Uh, this is your city water. If you're in a campground that has uh, provides water, you can actually uh, hook up to that. 30 amp electrical service. Okay, so I mentioned that Honda 2000 generator before. This is all I use to, uh, to run that air conditioner, and it runs it just fine. It has no issues with it. 
Um, right next to it is a um, power conditioner and surge suppressor. Okay. Uh, a lot of times in campgrounds, um, the power wouldn't, might, the pedestals might be wired wrong or things like that. This just saves your electrical system from a lot of hot air. This is a six gallon hot water heater. Okay. Uh, it's powered by either electric or gas. Right now we'll be using it on gas. But... Television services, if you're in a campground that provides uh, cable TV. And uh, this is where your fresh water fill is. Okay, so the whole camper is made out of two-piece fiberglass shell. Uh, I spent over 25 years in the Coast Guard and I, I know boats and this is built like a seaworthy ship okay it's all one piece uh, two piece molded into each other an upper shell and a lower shell there's uh no other penetrations or anything like that uh, there's no uh, vinyl roofing or plastic pvc or tpo uh, roofing material on top it's all gel coated fiberglass um, These here are your tie downs, okay? And these actually go on the truck and on the camper, and they make the uh, truck and camper one piece. And these provide all the lift for the camper. Now, they are on a remote control, okay? But if you uh, did have something go wrong and it's not working, you take this lever, you flip it down, you pull this plug off and there's uh, two cranks and you can crank all day long you can crank <laughs> okay um, these are bumpers for inside the bed of the pickup truck okay so that when you uh, when you back up underneath it you want to have about maybe a fist distance between the uh, the bed the front of the bed and the bumper. It just gives it a little bit of cushioning. Out onto this side here. This is the uh, external of the window. Again, it's a dual pane, thermal insulated acrylic window. LP gas storage. Okay, self-changing regulator. Uh, I usually run both tanks open. Uh, we don't go through all that much gas. Uh, I suspect when uh, this winter, when we do some winter camping, we'll be going through a lot more gas. The, uh, the awning up above us is a uh, crank style awning. It's a manual awning. It's about eight feet long and about uh, 12, 14 feet wide. Uh, crank it down with the, the crank over there and uh, you would adjust the legs. So this is the back of the refrigerator. Okay, um, propane and electric as well as uh, AC. So you can use DC, AC, or propane gas. Now, if you were to use DC, uh, it is not a compressive style refrigerator. It's an absorption refrigerator. So it will drain those batteries down relatively quickly. You better be on a very good sunny day <laughs> to use it during the day. Uh, up above is the uh, exhaust vent for the, uh, the Furion uh, range top uh, vent. And uh, of course you have a little LED docking light. Okay. This is your exhaust for your furnace. And a little bit of storage. This is where I store my generator and the surge suppressor. Okay. In the cabinet above it are the uh, two 100 amp hour AGM batteries. Uh, I don't have the key on me right now, but uh, that's where they're, uh, they're housed in.
Okay, so all the marker lights around. Okay, they're all LEDs. Okay, and then we have our rear awning. Now, this is really nice because it's also seven foot and it comes out a nice ways. Gives you a little bit of shade if you want to do, uh, uh, sit out on the porch. Uh, underneath here, we have another little storage compartment. Okay, this step unscrews. Put it to the side. Okay, and then inside here, we have a little tray that runs the length of that basement. You fit a lot of stuff in there. Uh, this ladder is uh, tall enough to get me on top of the roof if I wanted to. Uh, I got another couple of camping chairs in there, axe, water pressure regulator, camping spikes, uh, extension cord for 30 amp service. Always got to have duct tape. And then on the other side is another storage space. And that's where I keep my uh, camp rugs. I usually have a, a runner that comes out from behind here when we keep it on the truck. Okay, and uh, one for the side on the side. We just jumped out to put it out. Large grab handle to help you get in and out of the, the camper, uh, especially if uh, it's up on the bed of the truck. And uh, a backup camera, which really helps into backing into any kind of spots that you want and it's, and it's also good to keep an eye behind you to see if anybody's getting too close uh, i feel sorry for anybody who gets too close because this bumper is all powder coated well it's aluminum but it is thick it's part of the superstructure of the vehicle and this step folds up and out of the way. I feel sorry for somebody who rear ends me. Northern Light gives you a six year structural warranty uh, on, uh, on the truck camper. Uh, they're built in uh, Kilowannic North uh, New Brunswick or yeah, no, British Columbia. Kilowannic British Columbia. I had to check on the back. <laughs> uh, and you know, if you want cold, you know, go up to British Columbia in the winter time. Uh, it, it's cold. Uh, so it is a four season camper and it is one of the only five star rated truck campers that are out there. Thank you for taking the time today to give our viewers a tour of your truck camper. We haven't featured a truck camper yet on the channel, so this is kind of new for our viewers. Maybe some of them might have researched these while they were looking at fifth wheels, travel trailers, and motorhomes. Now you mentioned earlier about a fifth wheel or, or another type of RV. What made you make the move or switch to a truck camper style? That's a good question. Um, bigger isn't always better. Uh, we, we, we had the truck camp, the, the fifth wheel for, uh, and we still have the fifth wheel for about three or four years. And it was always a hassle. You had to hook it up. You had, the maintenance was three times as much. Uh, it had three, three slides, you know, so you had to do maintenance on the slides. It was a trailer, so you had to make sure that you had, your trailer tires were in good repair. Uh, much heavier, much bigger. Um, you didn't have the agility or the nimbleness that this gives me. Um, if I want to go somewhere on the spur of a moment, boom, I'm, I'm in the truck and I, I can go. Okay, I don't have to go pick it up, uh, make sure everything is functioning, do a test on all the systems first. Everything is sits in the bed of my truck. It's right there, it's ready to go. Uh, if we want to go off-road a little bit, you know, we can go off-road. You can't do that with a fifth wheel, not really. 
you know you might be able to get out onto some BLM land with a fifth wheel but if you want to get out into the back country you're not going to do it with a fifth wheel. Now there's are a lot of other probably not a lot there's a handful of other truck camper manufacturers what sets this manufacturer aside from some of the other well more well-known brands? Another very good question. Um, Northern Light and Bigfoot uh, were the two campers that uh, really impressed me with the quality of their builds. Um, both of them are fiberglass campers. Uh, they're both uh, two-piece. There's only one scene in this whole vehicle. That's right here in the center where they meet. Plus they uh, put uh, marine grade plywood behind it and then they seal it and they make sure that everything, and they use the right hardware. Nothing rusts, nothing's falling apart. Um, one of the things that I really was disappointed with is when I took a look at uh, other truck camper manufacturers like uh, Palomino and uh, some of the other ones. Uh, but Palomino was the biggest one. I was just looking for something that was, you know, going to be lightweight and I could throw in the back of the truck real quick and just get out for a weekend or something like that. But when I actually looked at the construction and the way that it was put together, I would have gotten maybe one or two seasons out of it and, and it would have been trashed. Uh, it was very flimsy. Uh, this is put together like a boat. Uh, I spent over 25 years in the Coast Guard and I know boats and I know a good boat from a bad boat. This is a good boat. Uh. Now you had mentioned the different size floors for different bed configurations of trucks. Uh, what are the other things people should consider when they're shopping. You talked about the weight on the inside. You're How does right. it all factor in for tow vehicle requirement? If you're looking at a truck camp, the two things that you gotta keep in mind is your bed size, okay, and your cargo capacity, okay? If you only have, you might have a three-quarter ton truck, but you might only have 2,300 pounds in cargo capacity. This camper weighs 2,800 pounds. So you're already putting your truck at a strain, okay, and overloading your truck. So you don't want to do that. You want to do this as safely as possible. Um, buy, buy, look at campus first, and then look at trucks. But if you already have a truck, then look at what your cargo carrying capacity is. And there's an easy way to tell them that. And every single truck has one. If you want, walk over my truck and I'll show you. Inside every truck, there's going to be a sticker located either on the door jam or on the inside. This one here is located on the inside, okay? And I don't know if you could read that, but it says that uh, the cargo carrying capacity of this vehicle is... 3728. 3728. So, that's one of the things that you have to keep in mind. Now, I've done a couple of things to the truck to help beef up the suspension and things like that. But one of the great things about this truck is it's got 9,000 pound axles. Okay, so I can have 9,000 pounds on this axle. Now, I've also put Rancho 9,000 shocks and I put uh, Timbers, okay, to help with that. You notice the inside of my truck bed, it's, it's slightly raised. It's about a two to three inch uh, raise in here. And the reason for that is, well, we, we haven't sold our fifth wheel camper and I don't know if we're going to. Uh, the fifth wheel bed rails are still mounted in the bed of my truck. So what I did was I built a frame around it and put a piece of plywood over it. So I can, uh, still mount the truck camper and uh, if I wanted to go on a longer trip or take the fifth wheel well then I can uh, uh, pull this out this comes right out of the bag and uh, remount my fifth wheel hitch in there and 
it'll work just fine. Now Northern Light does recommend that you put a, uh, a bed mat on, uh, on your, in, your, in your truck bed. So this is about uh, three quarters of an inch. This is a horse stall mat. Fantastic. I, I don't get any slippage uh, in here. Uh, it's really thick. It's heavy duty. It's not thin. Uh, I've seen some truck bed ma uh, mats that, that are so thin that they're one eighth inch thick and and really, if you put it on, put your camper on a little caddy wamp, it's just going to rip. Okay, so this is a seven-way plug. Okay, and this is how the truck camper gets its uh, illumination from all the lights. Okay. Uh, my truck has two seven-ways mounted. Uh, loaded the truck camper. Uh, Forgot to plug this in to here first, so I just plugged it on the outside. Um, this here is for a, a cargo basket. Okay, so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount the cargo basket under, under here, and all of this will fit up underneath that porch. And this extends out because the truck camper uh, sits out further, it sits proud of the back of the truck? Uh, about, about a foot and a half to two feet. Okay. Uh, it, it'll hang over the end of the truck. Um, the biggest thing is, is when you line this up, is that you center it between the wheel wells. Okay, you get centered between the wheel wells, it'll it, it'll go in every time. And is that a one-person job? You can do it with one person. It's always good to have a spotter. Uh, another great thing about Northern Light, they put exactly where the center of gravity is of their truck campers. And the center of gravity sits exactly in the center of the wheel well, uh, uh, over the wheels. Well, Chris, thank you very much for taking the time today to give our viewers a full tour of your beautiful truck camper, as well as give us some tips and some insight on some of the additional items that you got. Uh, this is Patrick with New Jersey's Outdoor Adventures YouTube channel. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please like this video, comment, share, subscribe. I'd love it. And we'll see you soon.